So we are in Hamburg uh, meeting Paddy Broughton on, on Kiala too. It's 50 years since I've seen, since I've seen the boat for the last time in Newport Beach, California. Sitting here in the cockpit of Kiala 2 with, with Patty Broughton, and uh, for me, this is a sacred moment. I, I, I did the, I did the uh, Bermuda race in 2014 and saw the raid for the first time. And, and uh, uh, I've been to told that I looked that I, I was this close to burst crying at seeing the raid for the first time and being being back on board uh, well I've never been on board but I've seen Kialoa 2 in California for 50 years ago and now being on board and uh, the cockpit is is pretty much similar similar sacred feeling to be here so uh, Paddy I, I understood that that uh, at an earlier phase of your uh, offshore racing career you have been sailing a Finnish built Swan. So, uh, tell a bit about your background and and how how you got involved with yeah. with this legendary yacht. That that Swan was a very fine vessel. It was hull number twenty four. It was a Swan fifty one, uh, and I bought it in nineteen ninety four uh, when I was working in the city, and I had this idea that I wanted to sail around the world, uh, and I wanted to do it before I was too old, and I was in my mid thirties, I think then. So I sold my house, bought a boat, uh, and sailed with my brothers from England out to the Caribbean. Uh, did the Ark in 95 and did some racing in the Caribbean, then went through the Panama Canal expressly to get to Australia to do the 1996 Sydney Hobart race, which we did. And I had such a good time, I decided I was going to stay and live in Australia. <laughs> and uh, I sold that boat and began racing for other people. Um, on some quite famous boats, so Brinda Bella, which was a, a yeah. very quite well known Australian maxi, and Yendi's, which won the uh, Hobart race a couple of times, um, and just really enjoyed my ocean racing. But as I got older, I wanted to sail with my friends, uh, and the, the the frantic and you know, sometimes not very savoury element of the very high end uh, uh, modern racing wasn't quite to my uh, my liking. And I looked around with my brother for a boat that was an ocean racer, but with a classic pedigree. Uh, and I was thinking of a Swan 55 like you, the Swan 57s as well, and maybe a Swan 65, because I really liked the Sparkman Stevens design. I liked the way those old Swans were built. Fantastic boats. Uh, and we came across Kilo too, who was sitting at that stage in, in uh, Portugal and she looked good, but hadn't been sailed particularly aggressively for many years. So the sailing systems were a bit weak, um, but it, it, ultimately the hull was in great condition. And what better boat could you ask for from the point of view of an offshore racing pedigree? And so my brother and I hatched a plan to buy it, have it refitted here at the Hamble Yacht Services, and then to do the 2017 Fastnet race, sail her to Sydney, and do the 2017 Sydney Hobart race. There's not many boats have done the Fastnet and the Hobart in the same year. And then try and do some of the uh, ocean races that Jim Kilroy did. 
So we, in 2019, we sailed from Sydney to Los Angeles uh, and did the 2017, the 50th Transpac race, which was fabulous, and sailed back to Sydney and did the 75th Sydney Hobart race. That's yeah, I think that's something which I really do admire, that it's very rare that ocean racing boats are taken from one race to another on their own keel, and that, that's how it used to be in the 60s and, and 70s, so you're kind of keeping that, that tradition alive. And that was the, the New, New York Detroit. boat, uh, Karina has done, yes. done that, but yeah. but there are not man, many not of them, many. And, so hats off. That was the way Jim Kilroy did it, if you read, oh, yes. the, read the reports. Oh yes, okay. or, or Huey Long's Huey on this, the, the famous boat captain Sven Jobs sailed, uh, if I remember right, over 200,000 miles taking the audience from one race to another around the globe. <laughs> yeah, yeah as, as it used to be. And, and certainly the crew that we put together are perhaps a little bit older. There are people who've done a lot of Sydney Hobart races and a lot of ocean races in general and Admiral's Cups and things like that. Uh, and we've enjoyed sailing with each other um, and sailing to a slightly different, uh, a different tune, if you like. Mm -hmm. So uh, this year's, um, we, we did the Sydney Hobart race, the, the 2022 Sydney Hobart race and then we prepared the boat to sail to here to do the 50th um, the 50th Fastnet race uh, and it was a great race for us it was hard uh, some of it was very frustrating but the but the old girl performed extremely well we had no breakages uh, apart from one incident where the coffee machine came off the gimbal table because someone nudged the gimbal table the coffee machine went through the laptop and about six hours into the race which in many ways turned out to be a good thing because we then did the race old school we used tidal atlases I, I was just saying that that, that that shows that you shouldn't have laptops on board <laughs> <laughs> and we, we I think we probably sailed better because we weren't relying on the laptop we weren't thinking about that yeah. that whole program I certainly got more sleep <laughs> because I didn't have it to fiddle with, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and we, we really enjoyed our race. It was a little bit frustrating at the Fastnet race, but um, in the end, we, we did pretty well. I think we finished Division Zero, which is a very yeah, high-fluting division. I think we were 12th out of 49 boats. Yeah, well, and many of the boats didn't that's finish. Very respectable. <laughs> I mean, generally envious. <laughs> oh yes. Well, I'm sorry about that, but yeah. no, we we. We felt that we had uh, we had really prepared the boat well, and we really enjoyed the race. Yeah. Uh, and everybody uh, came to Sherbrooke with a with a bit of a smile on their face and lots of stories to tell about yeah. you know, when when it was like this. And as, as I think what, what you have been doing is a great example of, of bringing the old times style fun back to ocean racing and and uh, and the. Ocean Globe race that we are about to start with, with Galliano with Secure is a perfect example of the same same philosophy and, yeah. and attitude and, and uh, I think that that's something that should absolutely be done uh, with Kiala too. Uh, she would be the perfect boat for the race. And I, I think she would. She's, she's maybe, maybe you ought to reconsider selling her and I, keep her for four more years. Four and, more years. And there, there are already nine boats uh, entered, uh, if I have understood right. So this, this this would be a great boat to do it in. in the, we sailed from Cape Town to Albany on the way in 2017 mm. and had a, a really enjoyable leg. That was a fabulous yeah. leg. How, how far south? We did didn't get, get that far south. At that stage, well, as we're all seeing these days, with the global warming, the weather was quite odd. Mm. And we had some very strong westerlies even only down to 42, 43 south. Yeah, but um, we did go in, into the 40s. Yeah, mm. yeah, oh yes, definitely. And we uh, we were tremendous, tremendously fast for us. I mean, we had the orange sails up, so we had a trysail and a staysail up, mm -hmm. a storm trysail, storm staysail up, yeah. in about 45, 50 knots of breeze yeah. from the quarter, um, and nice long swells, and we were doing 250 mile days. Wow. We did three 250 mile days, yeah, one yeah. after the other, but no stress. Yeah, that's no fantastic. Yeah. One, of, one of the most amazing things was uh, because it was blowing hard from the quarter, we had uh, the boards in and the, and the top pulled over. Um, and if you were down below, there was a, quite a nice motion, mm -hmm. 45 tons gives a nice motion. Yeah. 
And when you came on deck and you opened the lid, it was like, wow, it's windy up here. And you, it was just blowing like heck. Yeah. And then you, you would be on your watch for your two hours and then would go below. And then you were down below. You'd be talking like this because you couldn't hear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it was very quiet down below and very comfortable yeah. and quite, yeah. quite um, warm and dry. Yeah. Uh, and it, we, as I said, we were just doing these big mild days, one after the other, one after oh, the other. Yeah. That and that, that, that's the one big difference between classic ocean sailing boats and, and the modern ones, that exactly uh, the, this difference uh, between uh, below decks and, and on the deck. And, uh, we were talking with with Arto Linervo, who is the owner, skipper of, of Tulikatu, which is the 52-foot uh, DSS yeah. uh, carbon fiber boat, and, and, and they crossed the Atlantic last winter uh, with her. And he was saying that that on that boat going, uh, when you're inside the boat, it's like being inside a drum, and you think that all hell is lost. <laughs> and then, then in, in a big game, you go up on deck and you realize that, no, it wasn't that bad at all. <laughs> Totally the opposite. Yeah, yeah. And so we had, you know, a big freezer and big fridges. We had roast meals and wow. a nice hot meal every day, and yeah. a coffee machine that was working the whole time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the coffee machine sits on the gimbal table, so it's always, yeah. always ready to be used. Uh, and it was just very comfortable. And while we weren't doing big mileages like 400 mile days for us, that being able to repeat that sort of 200 to 250 miles was, yeah. you know, you cover a lot of ground over time yeah, yeah. In, in a very low stress way. Mm, yeah. it, it was very enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. Go, go down below and read your book. And take yeah, that's it. right, that's right. Yeah. 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 Well, I guess uh, the next thing is to uh, go below and, and have a look at the interior. And I, before doing that, I to tell that we, we have uh, pretty much rebuilt the interior of Galliano with Secure with uh, uh, Ocean Globe Race in mind to, to make the boat as comfortable offshore for the uh, team as, as possible. And, <clears throat> and uh, the interior of, of Kialo has been uh, one of my big inspirations uh, because, great. because rather than, than concentrating uh, doing the boat in a not or swan way, I have wanted to pay tribute to the Sparkman and Stevens uh, tradition of, of the light interior and yeah. white spaces and so on. But yeah. but we'll we'll take some footage and, and compare it to Galliano. Brilliant. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Paddy. No <laughs>